Hi, welcome to part two of my tutorial on how to export flipbooks directly from InDesign CS5. So what we did in the previous section is we went into our master pages and added some gradients and you can see that they are set to multiply against the background. The opacity is 15 percent and they're basically going from a brown to a cream color and that cream color happens to be our paper color and all I did is bring this bottom slider down about 10 points to get a little bit more of a cream tint to the paper. Um, these shadows on the outside edge are very important because when the paper color matches on both sides what happens is things get very uh, blown out. You can't really see the corner of the paper. So by adding a little bit of contrast on the inside edge, um, as you drag the corner across, you'll see it better against the background and you get a much better page flip effect. So before we add covers to this, I've got a couple of problems. You'll notice that even though I've got these backgrounds on the master pages, here for example is an illustration and you can see that it's set to multiply and yet it still has its white background. It's not multiplying against the background. And the same is true for these ornaments. If I zoom in on them, you'll see that they still have their white backgrounds. So we need to do something about that. I think that the best way to do this is simply to create a couple of screenshots. What I'm going to do let me zoom in here so I've got something that's pretty wide let me move some of these panels out of the way I'm gonna take my gradient and match it with my colors here <clears throat> okay there's my effects palette just wanna make some room here on the screen and what I'm gonna do I'm going to take a screenshot on the Mac. It's Command Shift 4. I'm not sure what it is on the PC. And I'm going to start just on one side of the line. And I'm going to come back to this other side. And this only has to be really tiny because what I'm going to do is stretch it to fit the space. So it's not going to add a lot of bandwidth. So I've got that screenshot. And now what I'm going to do is place that screenshot here's the first one and you're gonna notice that it's way bigger than my page the first thing I'm gonna do here is resize it actually what let me get that middle arrow if it'll let me go here I'm going to bring this over, bring this here. Now let's zoom back in. And you'll notice that it doesn't match the gradient very well. If I deselect it, you can see it. But what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to pull this down over the white area of the map. Just the, t just the frame, you can still see the gradient at the top. And then what I'm going to do with fitting here is I'm going to fit the content to the frame. And when I deselect, it should look pretty much invisible. So I've got that bitmap in there. It's a tiny bitmap, but it's stretched out. <laughs> because my maps are all on these master D, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a paste in place on master D. I'm going to send that to the back. Shouldn't make a difference, but um, just to make sure my gradients are on top. And you'll see now when I go to Master D that it doesn't work. Let's see. It has to be um, back on top of the gradients because otherwise the gradients multiply with it. Bring to front. Here we go. Learn something new. So here, let me turn my frame edges off. Here's my page 
and that should work pretty well. That should take care of almost all of the maps. Let me go back to my pages palette here. Should go back to the maps. You can see that this one is not working. Even though in section D, I've got the map. that map needs to be set to multiply and it'll work. I do have one in section A. Uh, in master A I have one right side map. I'm going to set it to multiply. We're going to have a different problem here. It's working part way but it doesn't like what's happening. So what I'm going to do is the same thing real fast. I'm going to take my screenshot there. I'm going to import it here. Let me come down underneath. Drag up to the top. Fit content to frame. I should should blend very nicely with the background and then in this case I'm just going to say arrange send back. So that takes care of that one map. <clears throat> Let's do these ornaments. Now the ornament only occurs on certain pages so what I want to do in this case is either use a very small block in the master page or I think in this case I'm just going to do something manually with the ornaments. So let me select that ornament. Let me come in here and oops, scrolling around. It's my scroll wheel going nuts. Here we go. I'm just going to create some guides here. When I do my screenshot, I'm going to start. I'm going to make sure that the guides are not included. Again, it just needs to be small. Let's zoom back out. I'm going to import this. And what I want to do is, let's get this back down on the page, just inside the guide. Just inside the guide. Let me drag this down. Put this here. Oh, I need my control key. That's not it. Select it. There is I see that's the original gradient. Click here, hit the control key fitting, fit content to frame, and that should take care of that gradient and it looks more or less invisible. It's sitting on top. I'm just gonna butt it to the line there for positioning and then copy object, arrange, send it back, and that looks fine. Let me go to, I'm not going to do all the pages while you watch, but let me do the next one. Paste in place, object, arrange, send it back, and that one's fine. Let's do one more. Paste in place, which is Option Command Shift V on the Mac. It's probably Option Control Shift V on the PC. Object, Arrange, Send it Back. I could have done this in the master page if I wanted, but I have a lot of master pages that won't need that bid map. And because I'm exporting to the web, I want to conserve bandwidth as much as I can. So that's that process for taking care of my 
my bitmaps in my piece, making sure that they blend with my pages. Now, let me save this. The next thing I want to do is I want to add the title page and the back page, the cover page, and I'm going to do that in part three.